Hey everyone, this is just a quick video to help visually explain how I've envisioned wild card allocation at the 3A level for the Provincial Volleyball Tournament in Alberta. Just to clarify, currently at Provincials there are eight zone reps, one host, and three wild cards. I'm not proposing we change that setup, but what I am proposing is how we give out those three wild cards. First of all, what I'm going to do is I'm going to present two hypothetical scenarios to help explain this. The first scenario is what I would consider to be the most common. The last ranking list done before zone weekend is the list we would use to allocate wild cards because it would be based on the most data. So here's a hypothetical list given. Um, it's got various teams from various zones. Uh, it would have eight zones um, represented uh, not on this list. Here there's only six. Uh, zone G and Zone H wouldn't are not are not ranked. Don't have teams that are ranked, but the other zones do have teams that are ranked and are mentioned. Uh, the first thing that we do is we cross off the highest ranked team from each zone. The reason we do that is because these teams would be considered the top teams in their zones and would therefore most likely qualify for provincials by winning their zone and being that zone rep at provincials. So I'm going to cross those teams off right now. So. So those are the highest ranked teams from each zone on that list and they're being crossed off. What we also do is we also cross off the host team because they're given an automatic bid. So if they are found in the provincial rankings, we just cross them off as far as earning wild cards because they're, they're already going. So there we go. We should be giving wild cards to zones that have multiple provincially ranked teams. These would be considered the most competitive zones for that year, and those are the zones that should get the wild cards. Now that the top teams in each zone are identified, the three wild cards can be distributed. They are earned by the high next highest ranked team from a zone starting at the top of the ranking list. So in this scenario, you can see that zone A has a second team in the ranking list, right here at ranking number three. So this zone would be given the first wild card. Then if we move down the list in order, we can see that zone B has a team ranked at number seven. And then also zone B also has a team ranked at ranking number nine. So in this scenario here, the three wild cards would be distributed one to zone A, and actually in this case, two wild cards would be given to zone B. It is important to note that the wild cards are not actually given to the actual teams themselves but to the zone that that team is from. The zone then awards that wild card to the next best performing team at its zone tournament. So that's why this process has to take place all prior to the zone championships. On the flip side here, this next scenario is on the more rare side, but I figured that this possible scenario needed to be covered in the proposal in the event that it might happen or something similar to it. It illustrates how the honorable mention list is used to distribute wild cards if it is absolutely necessary. In this scenario, each zone has a team in the top 10. Also, the host team is found in the top 10, so we'll cross all of these guys off the lists based on the rationale I gave in the previous scenario. You'll notice that zone B has a second team in the top 10, right here. And so this zone, zone B, would earn that first wild card berth. But now we've run out of teams in the top 10 to allocate, or run out of zones in the top 10 to allocate wild cards to. So what we move next to is the next best solution, which is the honorable mention list. Um, it begs the question, who gets these wild cards using this list? Looking at the honorable mention list, we can see that there are two teams from zone F that are, that are eligible to earn a wild card, which is more than zone C and zone E. Zone C and zone E each have just one team. Zone F has two teams. So we give the second wild card to zone F. Now because the honorable mention list doesn't specify which teams are ranked higher, once a zone has received a wild card berth via the honorable mention list, it is only fair that if there are other wild cards still left to distribute, as there is in this case, there's one left, they're distributed to the other zones that haven't received a wild card yet. In this case, there is a tie between zone C and zone E. Each have one team in the honorable mention list. The way the tie is broken, according to my proposal, is that the zone with the highest top 10 ranked team will get the wild card. 
The reason for this is because when we award wild cards, we want to award the wild cards to the most competitive zones. So according to this, zone C, because zone C has a team ranked at number three, and zone E has a team ranked at number five, zone C would get that third and final wild card berth. Thanks everybody. I hope this video made things at least a little bit more clear. If you have any feedback or you, you have any comments, you can make comments in the section below or you can send me an email. Uh, thanks everybody.